Package for Spam Subi? Yep, that's me. Okay, let's open everything. So, if you guys didn't know, the very first camera I ever used was my dad's little point and shoot that he would use for work. It was this tiny metallic red camera that was able to record video. I was always into martial arts as a kid, so naturally, as you would, I stole his camera and started making homemade kung fu movies with the homies. And action! Open fire! Throughout high school, my lovely grandma noticed that I was always using my dad's camera to make movies, so on my birthday, she decided to gift me a Canon 60D that was on sale. Thanks, grandma. I would then make a bunch of high school film projects with this camera. Sometime after high school, I got into cars, and that's when I upgraded to the Canon 80D. I finally started getting paid gigs and made a bit of money. On the weekends, I took it to car meets, made even more action movies, Throughout college, I would continue using this camera for all my film classes as well. Eventually, I tried out the Canon 6D Mark II, but ended up selling it after a couple months. Then I got the M50, did not like it at all, and returned it. After dropping out of college and pursuing filmmaking full-time, I ended up saving for a 1DX Mark II, which I have been using since and is the camera you guys all see me dangle out the window like an idiot. This camera is a workhorse. It did everything. I filmed a lot of weddings, car dealership videos, clothing brand ads, restaurant commercials, and of course, more action movies. Only now this time we had a budget. Uh, <laughs> this is kinda. Honestly, I really love this camera. It creates a super buttery 4K image and produces amazing photos. I also use the Canon EOS R, which I'm currently using to film this video. If you guys are looking for a good full frame camera to start with that won't break the bank, I definitely recommend this camera. Pretty much all the photos you see on my Instagram have been taken by the EOS R. I've been using the 1DX for about 4 years now, and I think it's time to upgrade. There's nothing wrong with my 1DX, it's just getting a little dated now, plus my workflow could definitely improve if I stepped out my comfort zone. I've always wanted to get a cinema camera, but didn't want to go balls out and get something like a red. <sighs> Not that I can afford something like that. So when Canon released the new C70, I felt it was the perfect camera to dip my toes into. Alright! Charger, hand strap, the top handle. Alright, oh, before we get to the camera, battery. Oh, that's a pretty chunky battery. Oh, the mount for a microphone. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yo, this thing is thick. Woohoo, shit. Dude, this thing is thick. Thick boy. Let's take a look at this beautiful Super 35 sensor. Very nice. Now the C70 uses a RF mount and because I'm using EF lenses, I went ahead and got this 071 times adapter. Basically what this does is while it adapts EF to RF lenses, it also turns the sensor size pretty much to a full frame sensor size. And it also gives you one extra stop of light, which I think is pretty awesome. It comes with these bracket mounts that basically you can install. The adapter mount already goes on pretty sturdy, but adding these brackets, you know it's definitely not coming off. All right, now you can see this is what it looks like. We'll go ahead and place our battery in, get a little satisfying click. You're going to need a very fast card like this one, and C70 obviously has two card slots. We got a flip out screen here, very nice. Watch me vlog with this. <laughs> Over here we got our audio controls. On the left side we got 
dual mini XLR inputs. And they also give you a little 3.5 millimeter mic jack. And over here we get a full HDMI port. That's good. And then of course we got our other controls like peaking, zebra, white balance, and most importantly, built-in ND filters. I have a bunch of ND lens filters and it gets really annoying screwing them on and off. I feel that it wastes a lot of time. Instead of screwing on filters up front where the lens is, now the ND filter is right in front of the sensor. Now I can finally say goodbye to all my ND filters. Let's put on the top handle. It also includes a cold shoe for mounting accessories like a mic. Money. I gotta say this one more time, but this camera is <laughs> extra. So here's a little size comparison for you guys. Not too crazy of a difference. It's almost the same width. 1DX is taller. Wow, the C70, it's longer this way. Definitely a little bit more heavier. And I'm sure this is gonna be a lot chunkier as soon as I start adding more and more accessories. To eliminate the need for all my lens filters, I also got the RF to EF drop-in ND filter adapter for my EOS R. Now I can simply drop in an ND filter or circular polarizer and control it with this dial. It's the same concept as the C70's built-in ND. The filter is no longer screwed in front of the lens. It is directly in front of the sensor and behind the lens. Super neat Canon accessory. Now my workflow is simplified. Fine. Before we go on the gimbal test, you can totally vlog with this. Oh wow. Oh wow. Testing, testing. How's it look guys? It's beautiful. All I see is her big ass forehead. Ow. <laughs> it's not that heavy. I could totally flip off screen helps. Face tracking right now it works. Let's okay. see. Let me see how many faces we can track. Okay, so we can track up to two faces. Wow. So I wasn't able to balance the C70 on my Ronin M. The main issue is the left and right. It's pretty much maxed out. All right, so here's a closer look so I can show you guys. As you can see, this camera is very heavy on the left side. You can clearly see it's a lot thicker over here on the left and then it slims down at the grip. Obviously because we have the components like the fan, battery, screen. Oops. Over here, I'm maxed out on the distance. I'm as far right as I can be to offset the left weight. I mean, I could technically put a counterweight, but that's just... This camera is already pushing the Ronin M to its limits. I don't want to push it anymore by adding counterweights. I don't even want to try to turn it on because it's probably going to destroy the motors. But you know what? Let's just see. Just for fun.
Holy shit. <laughs> Wait a minute. I mean, it kind of it works, but it shouldn't work. Is it going to tweak out? Would I hang this out of a car? Probably not. Yep, like I said, it's tweaking. I spoke too soon. I knew this would happen. That does not sound good. Ninth car I came by. Oh, yeah. Sucks. I miss my Ronin M. So, what do I think about this camera? First off, there's a lot to love, so I'll go over the pros. Image quality. The colors and sharpness this sensor is able to produce is hard to beat. The C70 has a whole array of recording formats and resolutions at your disposal. As expected, you get good autofocus. You're getting Canon's signature dual pixel autofocus system. The form factor is perfect for me just a tad chunkier than my 1DX. The most useful feature for me currently is the built-in ND. Having that is a game changer. It's got dual SD slots, the button layout is perfect, there's a whole lot of button customization as well. Not to mention the simple menu system, making navigation a breeze. They didn't have to, but they went an extra step and gave us a flippy screen, which I can appreciate. Lastly, the fan inside the camera is super quiet. I used this on set and my audio guy said he could barely hear the fan noise. While there is an option to make the fan even quieter, it's already pretty silent from what I can hear. Now the cons. There's only a few. This camera does not shoot raw. Instead of standard XLR inputs, it uses mini XLR. The tripod thread pitch is 3 8 instead of the more popular quarter inch size. Lastly, the rear dial does sometimes get in the way when I grip the camera. All of these aren't big deals, because I don't really care for raw video. As for the mini XLR input, I just got a mini XLR to standard XLR adapter on Amazon. I also got this little thread pitch adapter that changes the 3 8 thread to a quarter inch thread. And to fix the rear dial issue, I just disabled it so that when I do bump the dial on accident, it doesn't do anything. Overall, you get an awesome amount of features packed in a relatively small size and for a great price. The image you get out of this sensor is unbeatable. High dynamic range, color science, autofocus, and ease of use makes this little beast of a camera well worth it if you're already a Canon shooter. The 0.7x adapter is freaking awesome and allows me to continue using all my favorite EF lenses. Even if you are contemplating switching over from another platform, Canon ergonomics and menu systems are super easy to get used to. This was the perfect camera to replace my 1DX, which has served me well for the past four years. Now I can just use my EOS R strictly for photography and vlogging, while the C70 becomes the new workhorse strictly for all my pro videography projects. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you guys find it interesting. Let me know if you guys enjoy the longer form content, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys cop some merch at spamsubi.com. It really helps me out and allows me to produce more content for you guys. All right, guys, peace. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs>